All right, welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. You just uh, watched uh, the conversation we had uh, on Good Friday. It is a good day, but some family members are not actually having a Good Friday. They're not really having a good time because it's been eight years and uh, their loved ones are still uh, you know, trapped in captivity. You know, We talked about it when we introduced the show. That's uh, Chibo Goss. Uh, over a hundred of them are still in captivity. And um, the parents are saying that the government is not showing genuine interest uh, concerning them. It used to be like uh, the major stories. It used to be uh, uh, you know, on board captions across uh, you know, newspapers and uh, uh, television, radio stations. Uh, it used to be a very topical issue. It's been eight years right now and uh, it's as though the conversation is actually being muted to some extent. Uh, not much has been said about that. I understand that uh, we've had uh, more uh, issues of uh, insecurity and kidnapping in recent times. Uh, we've had the Dapchi uh, kidnapping. We've had uh, just not too long ago, two days ago. So we had, uh, you know, girls have been kidnapped uh, in uh, a college of um, health science in Zamfara State. It goes on and on, but we still have to remember that these girls are yet in captivity, even after eight years. Sadly, uh, April the 14th, uh 2014, 276 school girls were abducted by Boko Haram from schools, I mean the secondary school in Chibok town, that's in the northeast. And then some of the girls, if you remember, managed to escape while others were released following campaign efforts and government negotiations. Uh, government will always say they don't negotiate, but that's not the case. Now, despite all efforts to free all the pupils, 109, just like you have mentioned, of the girls still remain in captivity, and Leah Shaib, who is also still part of you know, this person, at least 16 have been killed. Uh, so far, that's according to the report. Now, since then, uh, abduction, the thing is, the fact that eight years after, nothing has been done. Uh, we would say nothing because it feels like we have moved on. We have forgotten about them. We've also forgotten that these children, 109 of them, belong to families. And you can only imagine the pain and the trauma and how it's so difficult for parents or their parents to be alive and the thing that these children are nowhere to be found. Now, according to reports that's been made available, uh, between December 2020 and October, as of 2021, 1,436 children, school children, and 17 teachers have been abducted from schools in Nigeria by armed groups, men. So it feels like we haven't even learned anything. Mm -hmm. That's another thing also. We, uh, you have an experience, and it's okay because you were not proactive, but one would think that you would take proactive measures to ensure that there's no reoccurrence. But this constantly happened. And so um, you still have more children that have been in captivity, and this has also forced a lot of schools to in close. the north, about 1,500 1, schools uh, who, in the northern school since then uh, you have uh, this school some schools have been shut down priorly and so education in that part of uh, in this part of the country is also being threatened in the northern East, yes. and it's, it's sad for government, I will constantly say this, and that's the basic things. These are basic things that you expect of anyone. Like I always make this reference to the fact that if you have a father, I mean, if you are a parent or you have a family, the basic thing, it would not be rocket science for the children to be asking for basic things. Oh, they need shelter, they need clothing, they need, you know, food, and of course, education would just come in. Now, government has a primary responsibility of protecting lives and properties, and, and government has failed. And the one that's even more surprising is the fact that when um, this government came into power, we're talking about the President Mohammed Buhari's administration, administration when they came into power. Top on the list was the fact that they boasted and they proposed to Nigerians how they were going to solve the issue of security and insurgency. And looking at this, what has been done? I don't even think that the Nigerian government still remembers that uh, you still have these Chibok girls still missing. Uh, still missing. And what are we doing to ensure that this doesn't happen? Defra, uh, despite several initiatives that's been put out, it's so difficult. It is so painful. And really, our hearts are with the parents and these children who have been away from their family for eight years. You can only imagine the pain and the trauma that they would be subjected to. Some of them would have been, um, you know, gone through several experiences, Traumas. rape, trauma, 
you can only tell eight years is a lot of time. Eight years is like another term for government. It, it, mm -hmm. It's actually two terms. So you do four it, it years is, and It is term. really a So, so it, it, it's really a time. Mm. But our government and our people have really failed these children. Yes, uh, we'll just uh, uh, let the conversation, uh, you know, uh, lie for some, um, for just now. And uh, let's just uh, keep on uh, pushing and reminding government uh, to do the needful and rescue these children safe. In all of this, a safe school initiative, you know, has actually come out. But we even also hear of reports of these three cheaper girls saying that they are being treated with contempt uh, in school. A whole lot happening, you know, and the parents are actually demanding the release. Uh, but we'll take a break right now and we'll give you an update on the UEFA Champions League, uh, Nigerian League, uh, just some sports generally in a moment. Do join us again.